the yoga classes as they've been popularized in the West. And then there's some gymnast showing off up the front, you know, and everybody tries to copy it. And it's, there's no yoga education in it. There's no understanding of what yoga as religious practice, yoga as devotion actually is. What is hatha yoga? You know, the union of opposites in your own system by which the source of opposites is revealed to you. See, hatha yoga, it's a profound devotional practice. And my guru, Krishnamacharya, the teacher of BKS Iyengar, he just re made it very clear that asana, that what you do in this physical body, is the primary devotional practice by which all other practices spin out. Right? He said it must be there. If you have a if you've been inspired by anything, if you've been inspired by text, by a teaching, then yoga, physical yoga, is what you do as a practical response to that inspiration. He said, if you don't know yoga, your inspiration actually makes matters worse because it puts beautiful ideas in your head and it puts a search into your life that you cannot fulfill if you don't have an actual yoga practice. Right? So he described yoga as the practicum, the practical response to inspiration. And all inspiration, all cultures, all religion, yoga must be there as the means by which you realize the ideals of that faith. This is what he said. And then he taught the technology of how to actually do it, right? So I taught that to Shamdas, and he loved it. <laughs> um, because most of these folk have rejected it, you see, because yoga's been taught so badly, they don't want to be bothered with it. They just have this idea of going, you know, mainstream, straight to meditation, or straight to puja, you know, or straight to kirtan, you know, and they haven't had that education to understand how yoga actually fits into that system. But our teacher, and I say our teacher, Krishnamacharya, because he was the teacher of Iyengar and Patabi Joyce, he's our grandfather, all of, all of you here. Krishnamacharya is your teacher. You know. And I come speaking for him, to you personally. <laughs> he's saying, Krishnamacharya is saying that this asana pranayama is the practical means of your devotional life and it must be there. If it's not there, your inspiration is going to make matters worse because it creates a structure in your mind of some ideal that you're not there yet, right? As yoga is intimacy with life, direct intimacy with life, which is nurturing infinity <laughs> arising as you and me. That's what it is. So there must be a yoga of participation in that which is reality. Right. So along came Shamdas and he, then he understood and there's this other piece of the jigsaw puzzle went in together. And so since that time, you know, and then he brought his son, I gave his son a yoga education. It was a, a beautiful, important relationship. And I, we just lost this man. But we haven't lost him, <laughs> because what he brought forth from the great tradition is a continual flow. You know, he came and he gave what he had to give, and then he's off again. Right? And I'd like you to know of him and understand what is the offering was from the great tradition. Now, one thing that Shamji would always say, as a as a bhakta, as a devotee is that the goal and the journey are the same. The same. Now what does that mean? Um, <laughs> the, the very act of devotion in this moment. You know, I do my asana, it is whole body prayer to life, you see. It's immediate, it's in this moment. 
It's the journey, but the journey is the same as the goal, right? It is your direct intimacy with reality itself to do asana or to chant the, the names or to sing the hymn in church. You know, whatever it is, your devotional gesture is, it is the goal. You could say, if the journey and the goal are the same, you could say, therefore, there is no goal. There's just the, the moment of intimacy. <laughs>